For agents out there, if you do that, you're gonna be just fine. So the big question is, what are top agents doing to absolutely crush it in real estate? To get the answers, we interview the top real estate agents to learn their secrets to success. If you would like one-on-one -on -one access to over 26 of the top agents in the country to help you scale your business, then head over to eliteagentsecrets.com slash partner, or you can just click the link in the description below. My name is Andrew Dunn. And my name is Peter Michael. Welcome to Elite Agent Secrets. Scott, I want to I want to dive into your second topic though, because this is like hot shit. Like we're in the middle of the market right now. Is the market going to call? I know all of us on this call have our opinions, so I definitely <laughs> want to unpack them. But first and foremost, I want your opinion on your se second topic of is the market going to call? Sure. So again, I'm in a fairly rural small town market. Um, we've been hot. It's been a seller's market pretty much my entire career. Uh, but we're not as hot as what the larger markets see. We don't see 15 offers. You know, we see three or four offers sometimes. We don't always see multiple offers, but it is definitely a seller's market. Uh, listings are hard to come by. There's no inventory. So that, that's, the, that's the context I'm coming from. Um, I get this question every day now, right? Because of interest rates and the economy and all this stuff is happening. My experience so far is that no, the market hasn't cooled. Uh, if anything, I think it's accelerated because buyers are chasing interest rates and they're afraid they're going to keep going up. So they're trying to buy something now while they can. There's, there's a greater sense of urgency because they're on the rise. Will it eventually cool? It almost has to, right? Um, we, we know it's going to pull prices down. Um, but I can tell you in, in my career, my 13 year career, I've been told every step of the way that this market can't sustain itself. We're going to have to come down. It can't, can't be like this forever. And it just keeps going and it just keeps going. And it just, it just keeps going. So my experience is, uh, people are going to be buying houses. People are going to be selling houses. There's also so much pent up demand that it's fascinating to me how this market, how the business has changed. Right uh, back ten years ago, you meet a buyer client, you line up four or five homes to go see. They don't like any of them, no problem. A couple of days later, line up a few more to go see. This goes on for a couple of weeks till you find them a house. Well, now it's like they somebody wants to buy. They've got one they want to see, and we better get there today because it's going to go under contract. And then really, we're just waiting for the next one to pop so we can all race in and see that house. And it's a very different way of doing this business. The days of spending an afternoon out showing houses for me are gone. Uh, it's now like, hey, your, your, your phone lights up, something hit. We better get after it, right? So, so my opinion is, um, yes, the market, I think it has to cool. There's so much uncertainty out there uh, politically and economically and, and all this. Um, I don't see how it doesn't. But... I don't care. <laughs> As an agent, I don't care. I'm going to be selling just like during the pandemic, just like during Christmas season, just like whatever the, whatever the downturn is, the slow season, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to get up and go to work every day and I'm going to keep selling houses. And uh, for agents out there, if you do that, you're going to be just fine. And if you're convinced the market's going to slow down or it's the off season or, or the weather's bad or whatever you want to do. OK, well, that's fine. Go ahead. Take some time off. I would appreciate that. I, I really like what you're saying here, right? Because everybody seems to like piss off Q4 pretty much completely. And then they're wondering why they have no closings in Q1. Um, and it drives me nuts. time. <laughs> yeah. And one of the questions that I was just kind of keeping in the back of my mind is as you were speaking is as a brand new agent, you were showing up, you had the patience and persistency. I have no patience. <laughs> I do have the persistency. So I'm trying to learn the patience part. But when things aren't going your way, what are some of the things that you kept on doing um, before, you know, you got to the numbers that you are right now when you first started out, other than just the open houses? I don't know if you were doing mailers at that point when things kind of get slower, the market shifts, right? Like you, you said right now, it's, oh, you, perception is everything. Right. Mm -hmm. So right now, you know, everybody's saying the market slow down. You're saying the market keeps keeps going because people are actually rushing before the rates go up. I would agree with that. Right. But that's perception. So like, we can either be optimistic or we can be pessimistic. So when things do, quote unquote, slow down for everybody else, what keeps you going um, as opposed to, you know, all the people that take a three month holiday? <laughs> um, so maybe one answer to that is I, I've shifted several years ago to being primarily a listing agent. Uh, so I'm about 80, 20 with sellers and listing volume is different than buyer volume, right? It, it, we get listings because people die, people get relocated, people are moving up, they're moving down. And those moves tend to not be determined by market forces as much. I don't think anyway, 
um, you know, when, when grandma dies, you got to sell the house. It doesn't matter what the market's doing. And so I, I've, I guess I've tried for years to establish myself as the primary you know, listing agent in the market. And so that's one way to insulate yourself from some of those downturns. And then there's always, you know, I've been busy enough my entire career that if there's a, if there's a little breathing space at some point, I got stuff I can catch up on. So like, like I talked about during the pandemic, I almost looked forward to it for it for a minute because I'm like, you know what, this is great. No one's in the office. It's quiet. I can really knock out some of the stuff I want to do. And it just didn't work because the business just came back so quickly. Um, so on the one hand, I've not really had much of a downturn. I've never really had, say, a quarter where everything's slow. Or, 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 you know, even a month. If I did, if I felt like, you know, hey, so I typically run somewhere between 15 and 20 pendings at a, certain, at a given time. That number drops down to five, like five or six. And I start thinking, okay, this is, this is odd. And what I do is I just start going to work. <laughs> it's more, right? I just start returning more calls. I just crank it up a little bit. Maybe I do some farming or a little more social media. And it just comes back. It's just not that hard. You know, when I was a contractor before I got into the business, we learned pretty quickly that if you just call people back and show up, you're going to get 80% of the jobs you bid because no one else shows up. And I think that kind of applies to what we do here too. If you just communicate and talk to people and work your deals and work your clients, you're going to be fine. So I, I've, I, don't, I, I reject the notion, at least not in my 13 years, that, that the market has taken a turn to the point that I, I'm struggling or that my business really has taken a hit. My business only ever takes a hit when I get distracted or I lose focus, and it might be something in my personal life or you know some other project I'm, I'm wrapped up in, um, but if I keep my head down at work, there's business out there. There's always going to be some. There's so much. There's more than anyone can handle. It's like the you know top ten percent or less. Basically, the top one percent of agents do ninety percent of the business, yeah. and it's like there's so much. There's so much out there. Hey, I just wanted to jump in here and let you know if you would like access to over twenty six of the top agents in the country to help you scale your business, then head over to eliteagentsecrets.com/partner, or you can just click the link in the description below. Now back to the show. Just going back to though the market and the cooling. I'm a data guy, engineer, but prior to this life. So, like, I just look at statistics. So, I look at stuff like birth rates, death rates, <laughs> divorce rates are, like, the three main things that you look at. And it's like, well, more people are being born, less people are dying, and more people are getting divorced. There is has to, more people there is that now need property. That isn't slowing down on any, like, less people are dying, Still getting loads of people born. Divorce rates are there. Like, you know, go look at the exact statistics. And that's where I draw my conclusions from. I agree. I think is it? it's not going to be a hockey stick because the last two years have just been crazy. I think it's going to slow from a hockey stick. But in no world, and I'm, I'll be the first to admit I'm wrong if this is true, but in no world do I see the market like collapsing or anything like that because the, that would mean that the demand for the property goes and like, oh, there's still loads of people that don't have homes that need them, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is why in certain states and other people we've spoken to, where like Washington, is it Washington? Is one of them where they've got like the the, the house prices of some of them is like 800k for like a new home buyer, like has to have like that to basically get into the market because it's just so expensive now because the, the you know the properties are just skyrocketed, and it's like, well, what's any is the government going to have to come up with a scheme? To know, you know, to help support new first-time home buyers to get in because the property prices are inflated so much that they literally just can't afford it anymore. And I think, I honestly think something like that's going to have to happen because the owners aren't going to arbitrarily decide to charge less. Sure, right. So the, yeah. the, the I this is again, I'll be the first to admit I'm wrong. My guess is going to be that. It's either they're going to do nothing or there will be some type of intervention to help support specifically people at least trying to get on the property ladder. I think we've seen, and when we talk about economics, even just outside of the US, for Canada, for example, banning investors, outside investors coming from buying all their market up, I think there might be some sanctions and shit put in place like that potentially as well, because it's like, all the hedge funds, all these people just buying up as much property as they can get the hand on. It's basically taking it out of the pockets of the husbands, the wives, the families. You know, I, I don't know. This could all be utter bullshit. I'm not <laughs> to admit if it is, but well, if that's it comes from your mouth, probably. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Brad? I'll give you one solution. They can all move to Wheeling, West Virginia, where 800K buys you pretty much anything you want. <laughs> 
we we get some for about eighty k if you're really interested. Um, I think it's going to cool for sure. Um, I don't think it's going to be the crash that it is. You know, somebody put it, somebody posted something and says, you know, if interest rates goes up, go up two percent. Um, you know, it costs you about another for an average home. It costs you about another seven thousand dollars a year. You know, that's it's, it's a, a decent amount of money, but at the same time, those sky's not falling. Like seven grand's not. You know, you're going up six hundred bucks a month. That's not. It's not terrible. You can just afford less. So. Uh, you know, it's it's been a while since we've seen something like this. But my market, as you know, Andrew, we've been in we're the only market, I think, in North America that's been going down for seven years since 2014. We're going down and now we just started going up again. So I know here in Calgary, there is that pent up demand and people are coming here. It's curious to see across the states. I think a lot of people are going to be selling their higher end homes, taking a bath and going to something smaller and downsizing, maybe in another state. Like I think the big states like California. Uh, you know, there's some parts of Seattle and like the expensive parts in, in the United States, I think are, they're going to be the ones I think that take it the most, but you know, Scott, I can't see your, you know, and forgive me, I don't know your market, but I can't see you guys going. It's just so affordable. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, I just can't see it going and, and cooling off so bad that your market tanks in that area. It's, it's just so affordable where you live. So it's true. And just two other things to keep in mind about my particular market, we're pretty insulated from all of the national trends. So when everyone else is, you know, up and down and up and down, we really stay pretty steady. Uh, we don't see the big booms. We don't see the big busts. So that's one thing that's been the case forever in our area. The second thing is we've got the oil and gas industry has hit our area in a huge way, the fracking industry. If any, I don't know if any of you guys have dealt with this, but it has radically changed our market. And we're on the verge of a massive announcement of a $20 billion uh, ethane cracker plant that we were all pretty certain is going to get built and it will be an atomic bomb in our market. It, it's going to be an influx of thousands of people. It'll become, we may see values absolutely skyrocket then. And that's one of those things that unless economic forces cause that project not to happen, if it happens, we're going to have 5,000 people that need, need housing right away. Um, this happened about 10 years ago when they first started drilling and putting in pipelines and the, it affected the market at every level. Uh, I sold multiple homes to you know, higher end management folks, but even on the very low end, we had neighborhoods that were absolutely worthless that suddenly rents went up so much because we had, we had all this extra workforce in the area. Investors were buying stuff, rehabbing it. Uh, it, it really it, it didn't it affected every single part of our market in a positive way. And if this plant happens and I mean, we're like 95 percent sure it's going to it every, almost this whole conversation for me personally is somewhat moot because we're going to be fine. Like we're going to be yeah. like, like idiots. And I want to add one more thing. As you talked about, you know, when that downturn comes, if, if we do see this cooling, isn't it the same thing we talked about with the pandemic? That those of us out there, out here who are producing and working and cranking it out, what happens when the market cools is some of the other agents are going to fall off and yeah. we're going to be positioned to be just fine. We're going to take those deals. It's Darwinian. Real estate is totally Darwinian. It's like it's the, yes. the best agents always win because they always put in the work, irrespective of what's going on. It's like they've just got blinkers on, you know, like horse blinkers, and they're just like, I'm just going to sell homes, just sell homes, contact leads, sell homes. They yeah. don't concentrate on outside forces. And I think that that's not even in real estate, that's in business in general. It's like the people that are successful, irrespective of economic change, climate, they're just like, I'm going to continue doing my shit and act like basically this isn't happening. Yeah. I think a lot of real estate agents that just got in in the last six or seven years when it's going gangbusters, they're going to be fucked because a lot of yeah. them don't have the proper work ethic to come in and see a shift. I coach agents and they're freaking out. I'm like, what? It's got like, what's the big change? But they just haven't seen even a change. It's always been like seven years of going up or whatever it is. If that's what you're used to. And all of a sudden there's a little blip in the radar. There's sheer panic for some people. I'm like, Guys, it's cyclical just because you've never seen it. It's been a long time. So I think it's going to get rid of a lot of agents and they're just going to start freaking out and finding something else to do, which will be good for our industry, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I think so too. That, that's what 2008 did in a lot of ways as well to mortgage, especially. It just eradicated all the people that were like just here to make money, wasn't into it. It was you know just up and up. And then it was like, oh, this is actually we're in a job and then they all just went fuck this and got something else you know thanks for listening to this episode if you would like one-on-one -on -one access to over 26 of the top agents in the country to help you scale your business then head over to eliteagentsecrets.com partner or you can just click the link in the description below 